Building an aircraft carrier takes generations of experience, hundreds of thousands of man hours, and years of planning and steady determination. The USS Gerald R. Ford, CVN 78, is the product of years of construction, and before that, years of planning and design. 5,000 shipbuilders in Newport News and thousands of suppliers across the United States contributed to this first-in-class ship. In this video, we are going to take a look at what has gone into getting the ship where it is today. Before we get started, if you do enjoy this video and would like to see more just like it, remember to give us a like and subscribe to our channel to get more sent straight to your notifications. The USS Gerald R. Ford is the lead ship of her class of United States Navy aircraft carriers. The ship is named after the 38th President of the United States, whose World War II naval service included combat duty aboard the light aircraft carrier Monterey in the Pacific Theater. A few weeks before Ford died, he was told by the former United States Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld, that the ship would be named after him. This makes the aircraft carrier one of the few U.S. ships named after a living person. Initially, Northrop Grumman began advanced construction on the carrier under a $2.7 billion contract in 2005. The U.S. Navy then signed a $5.1 billion contract with them in 2008 to design and construct the carrier. Northrop Grumman, based in Newport News shipbuilding facilities, later became Huntington Ingalls Industries and is the largest military shipbuilding company in the United States. Huntington Ingalls Industries comprises three divisions, Newport News, Ingalls Shipbuilding, and Technical Solutions. They have built more ships in more ship classes than any other U.S. naval shipbuilder and employ 19,000 workers. The USS Gerald R. Ford is the first new design for an aircraft carrier since the USS Nimitz over 40 years ago. It will replace the USS Enterprise, which entered service in 1961 and was decommissioned in 2017. Although it appears similar to a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier, there are many features that make the USS Gerald R. Ford unique. First-in-class technology includes a new nuclear plant, that can generate nearly three times the amount of electrical power as older models, innovative advanced arresting gear, and the electromagnetic aircraft launch system, better known as EMALS. When building an aircraft carrier, you are constructing a floating, moving airport that generates its own power and provides everything necessary to sustain habitability for 5,000 souls for weeks at a time at sea in all kinds of weather. An aircraft carrier is a roughly 350-yard long, 80-yard tall, 80-yard wide building made entirely of hardened steel. Normally, it could take five to seven years to build an aircraft carrier, but in the case of the Gerald R. Ford, it took eight years. Why? Well, if you're designing a new class of carrier, it will take longer than if you're building follow-on ships to the first in class. The new design may require new equipment, a new setup, and a new method of construction. The Ford class has a completely new catapult that works on electromagnetic principles instead of steam and an arresting gear that uses a water-based turbine. Both new systems had to be invented from scratch, and they are troublesome. There were no real civilian cognates from which to develop these systems. The only thing close to the catapult would be a linear induction motor, but those are not really very close cousins. New technological developments during the shipbuilding period and a government's new demands will take the shipbuilder more time to complete its construction. An aircraft carrier, or any ship for that matter, is built in three general phases or steps. The first phase is the laying down of the ship. This phase involves the placing of the first parts of the keel on the dry dock or the shipway of the shipyard. The keel of the new warship USS Gerald R. Ford was ceremoniously laid on the 14th of November, 2019, by Ford's daughter, Susan Ford Bales. The second phase is the launching of the ship. In shipbuilding, launching is the process of transferring a ship to water. The Gerald R. Ford was launched on the 11th of October, 2013. The third phase is the commissioning of the ship. 
This is when the ship is officially put into active service. The Gerald R. Ford was finally commissioned in May of 2017. The Gerald R. Ford is intended to be the first of a class of aircraft carriers that offers significant performance improvements over the previous Nimitz class. It is equipped with an ANSPY-3 and ANSPY-4 active electronically scanned array multifunction radar and an island that is shorter in length and 20 feet taller than that of the Nimitz class. It is set 140 feet farther aft and three feet closer to the edge of the ship. Replacing traditional steam catapults, the electromagnetic aircraft launch system will launch all carrier aircraft. This innovation eliminates the traditional requirement to generate and store steam, freeing up considerable area below deck. With the EMALS, the USS Gerald R. Ford can accomplish 25% more aircraft launches per day than the Nimitz class and require 25% fewer crew members. It has 25 decks and the capacity for over 75 aircraft. Its displacement is about 100,000 long tons. The armament includes two RIM-162 ESSM and two RIM-116 RAM surface-to-air missiles, three Balax CIWS, and four M250 Cal 12.7mm machine guns. Installed power is two A1B nuclear reactors, and the propulsion is made up of four shafts. The Navy estimates it will save $4 billion in operating costs over a 50-year lifespan. The ship's full deployment, originally scheduled for 2018, is now set for 2022. This is due to technical problems with the new features. It has also led to a $2.8 billion overrun in costs, resulting in a total ship cost of $13 billion, not including the actual planes on the carrier. The U.S. Navy completed its three-part explosive shock trials on the aircraft carrier on August 8th, with no major casualties on the first-in-class ship and less damage to repair during an upcoming maintenance availability than expected. The third blast of the full ship shock trials, which took place off the coast of St. Augustine Beach, involved a 40,000-pound charge that exploded right off the starboard beam of the new ship. The blast registered as a 3.9-magnitude earthquake, but the ship's commanding officer said it did less damage than expected. During shock trials, a small boat tows a 40,000-pound explosive behind it in the water. The Navy utilized marine mammal search teams, ensuring that no protected animals are in the vicinity. Once the go has been given, the blast detonates farther from the ship during the first event and then successively closer each time, and the crew of about 3,000 braces for impact. After the blast, the crew conducts damage control, looking for any signs of floods or fires and checking combat and ship systems to ensure anything that went offline is quickly restored. Helicopters landed on the carrier within minutes of the blast, showing that the ship was still in fighting condition. Once the ship's crew wrapped up initial assessments, it returned to Newport News Shipbuilding Yard in Virginia for several months of work. Once the ship is out, the carrier's crew will begin basic training and prepare to come together with the carrier strike group and carrier wing to train for the ship's maiden deployment. The ship has thousands of sensors on board to help the crew monitor system health, and thousands more were added for the shock trials to measure how the ship moved when exposed to the detonation. That data will all be compared to the computer model that told the Navy how the ship was supposed supposed to handle the blast, and the ability to validate or update the model will help PEO carriers going forward as it builds out the rest of the class and looks at potential updates to make the hull and the systems on board even more survivable in combat. A major hurdle for the crew has been getting sailors trained and qualified to operate, maintain, and fix their own gear. In the absence of new schoolhouses, which are on the way, sailors have relied on shore-based testing sites and simulators from vendors for training. As far as schools, General Atomics will host sailors at Rancho Bernardo, a neighborhood in San Diego, California. From there, the sailors will have access to a simulator to practice catapult launches. The Navy will also send sailors to the test site for electromagnetic aircraft launch system and advanced arresting gear in Lakehurst, New Jersey. But for all the myriad issues that come from fueling a radically different first-in-class ship, the crew are happy about how it is performing. Many of the key technologies have performed well, a significant improvement over some of the bugs the ship faced when aircraft started landing on and launching from the carrier in 2017. So after years of delays, cost overruns, and controversy, 
the ship is finally getting into its groove. What do you think of the USS Gerald R. Ford? Are there any other feats of engineering you'd like to see us cover? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to our channel to get our latest videos straight to your notifications. Thanks for watching.